This is what it's like to make a dream journey to a dream event in what's often called the greatest car in the world. If you're lucky, you might glimpse one silently patrolling the streets of a wealthy capital, but otherwise it remains one of those rarefied cars we actually imagine rather than see. The Rolls-Royce Phantom. Well, I'm driving the most expensive car I've ever driven. It's £255,000. It's a car that costs twice the amount of my house in this sort of palace of double glazing and immaculately lacquered wood. Even the ashtray feels more like a serving platter. And I know that some bloke called Cecil has got many years experience hand-stitched the top of the dashboard. And that's what it's all about. You are buying a bespoke big slab of English heritage. I like it all over, this car commands respect. You will move over when I come behind you. And I feel this immense sense of responsibility. I'm driving around in England's finest vehicle. I do feel very English, even though I look a bit like a terrorist. So what if this car depreciates Six pounds for every mile it travels. Nothing else I've ever driven comes remotely close to giving you so many tingles. It does feel extremely special. As the first day of my voyage to Italy came to an end, I needed somewhere to stay for the evening. I may have a millionaire's wheels, but not the paycheck. So accommodation has to be a bit more Matalan than Mayfair. We booked it at a campsite where I don't think they've ever seen a Rolls before, and I doubt they ever will again. That tent, 7.99. That car, quarter of a million quid. One of the problems you never hear about owning a car like this is that it attracts attention. You may feel like a monarch by day, but by night, you just feel like a target. This is day two. We survived the night in a very obscure campsite on the uh, French border. And, uh, and now I'm back in the glorious Rolls Royce. I'm still amazed by the car. We did crunch 500 miles yesterday, and I didn't even so much as get as a, a pain in the small of my back, which is what I usually get for most cars. I guess you're paying for that privilege, but my gosh, do I feel for Of course, driving a 7-litre car that weighs three tonnes means costly stops at the pumps. Though 15 to the gallon doesn't seem so bad, considering we were pushing a cliff face through the air. Johnny, and don't spare the horses. 